Hi, internet people. Okay, so this My Kinda Recaps is still about Carmilla. Yes, I know, Carmilla season 3 ended last week, but on Sunday, we're going to pretend that Sunday is the start of a week. Um, anyway, some people see it as the start, some see it as the end, it's whatever. Um, I did a Carmilla season 3 rewatch with some lovely people over on Twitter, so I thought that for this My Kinda Recaps, I would continue reliving the joy that is Carmilla and do a quick recap of the entire third season. Yes, you heard that right, entire recap, and we're going to do this quickly, because I've decided that I, since I did super detailed ones before, a super short one will be fun and exciting, and you can show it to your friends and be like, oh hey look, you can learn all about a Carmilla season three in like 2.5 seconds. Not really seconds, no, it'll be longer. But anyway, okay, Carmilla season three. We are in the library brand new location again, in the library because we have run there after season zero. Yes, after season zero, you'll see. Um, okay, season two slash season zero, whatever. Okay, so laugh, pay, laugh, Laura and Carmilla are holed up in the library. Uh, the library likes Laura, the library does not like Carmilla. Yes, they are holed up in the library trying to figure out what to do because they don't know how to go up against the Dean um, or how to get the Dean out of Perry. Yeah, that's difficult. People are missing. Laura is coping with the fact that she killed Bordenberg and was res partly responsible for Maddie's death. There's a lot of, like, Laura not wanting to do anything. She's running a lifestyle show called, uh, yeah, she's doing a lifestyle show, um, where she makes Harry Potter crafts and does a lot of other things, um, and the Dean is invoking plagues because seals are opening, the end of the world is coming, and there's a mystical magical door that can go into multiple places. Yes, uh, Laugh and Carmilla are pairing up together to try and figure out what is going on, how they can stop the Dean. There's a lot of Sherlockianness going on between the two between the two of them. Very Sherlock and Watson. Laura is avoiding getting into any of this. Any of this. No no investigating for our investigative reporter. Um, but Laugh and Carmilla together are lovely. They are doing great intensive work. Um, they then find these glasses that show uh, like hieroglyph stuff and these reveal to them that there are there's some sort of something or other that can stop the Dean and Laura eventually pieces together like, uh, yeah, it's talisman. There are four talismans. We can prison the Dean with four talismans. Got it? Okay. Uh, the first of these talismans is apparently in this spirally Cenobite themed room. Uh, yeah, Pinhead would totally vacation there. Uh, Carmilla goes to get the sword. He's gone for a very long time. Comes back. Has the sword. It's the sword. Or not sword. The book. The book. The book. The book. The book. <laughs> Carmilla goes and gets the book. Uh, and then the book has more stuff in it. Uh, still more investigating is happening. They're really not sure what they're going to do. Um, they also find out that Danny is a vampire. Theo is working for Corvée and so are the Zetas. Uh, Mel is trapped in a pit and respond or trying to report out to the universe to let Summers, anyone, know that they're trapped in a pit. Um, and no one is coming to help Mel. Uh, Danny, in her vampire state, has Kirsch still and is totally snacking on Kirsch. And JP, we learn, is still alive. Um, uh, but via Mel's podcast, because we don't see this in the actual series, uh, JP is, like, tied up and, like, it's really terrible. It's just terrible. Yeah. Um, but JP is still able to sort of interact with the library because he's, like, the library's high priest. Yeah, that's a thing. So he is managing to get secret intel to Laura, Carmilla, and Laugh. And then, um, when they're trying to collect things, like, they have the book, they have a thing, um, it's one of the talisman. Uh, yeah, uh, no, Danny and Theo come to get the talisman, and Papa Hollis shows up and saves the day, because Papa Hollis is there, and yay, Papa Hollis. I love Papa Hollis. He has bear spray. Um, but he and Laura reunite. He basically interrogates everyone. He and Laugh have a lovely moment that in, uh, in which, uh, Laugh is able to describe their personal pronouns, they, them, and Papa Hollis is like, yeah, cool, it's fine. Uh, he's also totally not okay with Laura dating Carmilla, uh, not because Laura is a lesbian. No, 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 no. He does not want his lesbian daughter dating a vampire, which, I mean, is the same thing to think. Um, while all of this is going on, they are trying to track down the other talismans and stay alive. So, they figure out the talismans are connected to board members, and, uh, one of the, uh, while they're doing all of this talisman stuff, they learn that the Dean is God, uh, yeah, an actual God, and the board members are godlike. Uh, there are some gods on the. Yeah, there are gods. Uh, Maddie is actually one of the gods, sort of. She's a god representative, so she's working for the god of death. And, well, goddess, whatever. Everyone is a god, some of them are women. Uh, the Dean is a female god, and so is the god that Maddie represents. So Maddie is summoned a couple times, she shows up, she's like, hey, no, I can help you out. 
it's actually very sad. There's a scene in which we learn that Maddie is very alone because she's just sort of like in death's hold and it's very dark and terrible when she's not able to talk to human beings or vampires. Uh, but there are games that can be played to win other talismans and information and they managed to get the second talisman, uh, Maddie's Locket, through a game of Scrabble, which is lovely. And then later they go to the pit and Carmilla manages to get the sword, which is the third talisman. The issue is the fourth talisman is Vordenberg's heart and uh, Vordenberg's dead. So eh, um, eventually they're still trying to figure out what to do. There are montages about how to get the Dean and Papa Hall is freaking out about getting the Dean and stopping the Dean and summoning things and yeah, ooh. Um, yeah. Papa Hollis winds up leaving because he's like, okay, you can, you're gonna, I'm gonna go get you help and you are going to do this. There are lots of oops moments between Laura and Carmilla in which they are totally not dating and still making out a lot. Uh, yeah, totally oopsing everywhere on all the furniture. Um, Papa Hollis eventually leaves. They're doing more work. There are sock puppets and attempts at sciencing to figure out what to do. And then they're like, okay, yeah. Uh, Laugh wants to bring the Dean to the library and exercise Perry's body to get Perry back. And yeah, that's a great idea that Laura and Carmilla are not for. And then Laugh is gone for a very long time. The next time we see them, they have the Dean unconscious and throw the Dean into a circle. And now we have the Dean in the library and the Dean is not happy about the library. And then plans are revealed and things happen. And then suddenly more people are there and everyone is in danger and all the talismans are in danger. And the library poofs Laura into different mentioned because JP in the library rewrote a point of history so instead of Laura surviving she was eaten by the anglerfish and that way Vordenberg is still alive so she can get the Vordenberg heart. The issue is there's a very depressing laugh and a human Perry in this dimension who works for the Dean and Maddie is there helping Carmilla and Camilla, Carmilla is a shell of herself because she killed Laura and so that Laura and Carm like that Laura our Laura, the only Laura, is with that Carmilla, and that Carmilla is very happy to see her, which is amazing. Um, it's very, very sweet, even though that Carmilla is so sad all the time. Uh, Maddie agrees to get Vordenberg's heart, gets the heart, then finds out that Laura killed her in this alternate dimension and destroys the heart, and then freaking out because JP is like glitching out. Um, Laura gets bounced back into the present, the actual timeline. Uh, Jeep is dead, which is terrible. And there's no heart, so they only have three of the talismans, uh, and then they have to figure out what to do. And the only thing that Carmilla and Laura can think of is uh, to kill Perry with the sword of Hoster. Yeah, except we've learned that the Dean uh, lost her one true love a long, 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 long time ago and buried her heart, so she feels no love. That's why all this is going on. There is a love story connected to our love story in which a love story is bringing about the end of the world, um, which has sort of already happened. It's lots of love stories intertwining. Uh, Laugh is very against killing Perry, so against that refuse, like, they refuse to talk to Carmilla and Laura, and then at some point disappear after doing weird things to all of the, the talismans, like, all the stuff is gone. Um, during this time, Betty has been helping them out. Yeah, you know Betty Spielsdorf, the one who got mushroomed very early on in season one? Yeah, she's, she's doing pretty good. Yeah, doing great. Listens to Laura occasionally and gives her info via a surprise phone call. Um, so that's all happening. Danny brings Kirsch to them and is like, I don't want to kill Kirsch. Like, I don't want to, there's a huge super emotional scene with Danny and Kirsch because Kirsch still cares about Danny, but then Danny is like, I can't, I cannot, I will kill him. Um, so Danny leaves and then they have Kirsch and Laura and Carmilla have so many touching scenes in act three, just describing them. There's a waltz, it's beautiful. There's, it's just the two of them are beautiful all the time together. They just are. Um, okay, so um, while Carmilla is sleeping and Kirsch is sleeping, Laura summons a the death god via Maddie and makes a deal. Yes, a deal that she doesn't tell Karma about and then they wind up in the pit because the only way they can think to kill get rid of the Dean is to kill the Dean with the sword and that involves going to the pit because that's where the seal is and Kirsch and Mel are going to help them. They're there, they're recording. Um, Maddie appears and talks to the Dean and is like, okay, yeah, this is happening. Uh, the Dean opens the door and is attempting to summon whatever she needs to do. She's rattling off words and I don't remember which language it's in. Uh, Laura and Carmilla go toward her with the sword and they're going to kill her. And then <laughs> it doesn't happen. The stabbing does not happen because Laura cannot do it. But the Dean already knows about the deal she made. And then Laura reveals that she made a deal to save Danny and Carmilla and Perry with Maddie. Well, the death god that Maddie represents. 
and she doesn't know like what's gonna happen like she's like I, I don't know I made a deal like I'm supposed to follow my heart and then laugh appears in a magical sciencey swirl of light and injects a pair of nanobots and the nanobots don't work even though they look like they're working and then the Dean rips out laughs eye and laugh screams and it's terrible and then the Dean takes Laura's heart and opens the doorway and Laura is dying and Carmilla is sobbing and the Dean is screaming because her lover does not appear and it turns out that according to Maddie as the death god um that that ceremony was not gonna work because you needed stuff freely given and nothing was freely given to the Dean and then the Dean is going to bring down Armageddon and then Laura is like no she like is going through all of like what happened to the Dean and then she hugs the Dean because she's giving her back to herself and then the Dean falls to the ground and Laura falls into Carmilla's arms and Laura is dying, dying, dying and it's awful and she and Carmilla are both, it's not okay, I was not okay, I've cried every time I have watched that scene, every time. We've discussed how much I hate crying, we remember that right? Because I talked about it in my recap of Act 3, yeah I hate crying, it keeps happening. Um, then Laura dies in Carmilla's arms. It's so awful. And then Perry wakes up and Laugh comes rushing in and Perry doesn't really remember anything that's happened and is freaking out because Laugh has a bandage over their eye and Laugh's like no it's okay and the two of them are like woo out of it. I'm going with shock. The two of them are just in shock. They rush off. Uh, Carmilla doesn't know what to do. She's already been screaming that she should be dead, like she wants to be dead now. And then Maddie appears and Carmilla's like, I'm going to make you a deal because her mother, well the god, who was her mother, um, made Carmilla human. And so Carmilla says she's going to gamble her life for Laura's. And the god of death, via Maddie, gives her a riddle. And it's apparently a very easy riddle for Carmilla. Turns out the god of death is being very nice. And Laura is brought back to life. Carmilla is still human. Maddie kisses her and says goodbye. And then Laura and Carmilla have a very touching moment and they get to exit the pit and they run off into the distance and it's beautiful and then as the credits roll we get to the end we're like watching them run and then we get the movie trailer which is lovely and I'm very excited for the movie. Okay that was pretty quick right? I got most of the positive points or at least most of the points. That was the goal. I mentioned sock puppets and waltzing and yeah I think I got most of it, not all of it. This is a quick cap. If you want to see super detailed recaps of all three acts, um, I have those. But I thought this would be fun because I'm eventually going to recap season two and season zero of Carmilla. I've already recapped season one. So I just wanted to do this one because I'm still thinking about Carmilla. I'm still watching Carmilla season three. I just needed to talk about it some more. Alrighty, so that is this My Kind of Recaps video for this week. Um, if you would like to see more of me, you can find me on Twitter at Clef Notes. Um, oh, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more of me, please subscribe. Um, but yeah, you can find me on Twitter at Clef Notes on my blog, clefnotes.wordpress.com. I write for the Nerdy Girl Express, the Nerdy Girl Express.com. I run their Snapchat, the Nerdy Girl EXP, and I post recipes on the iZombie Sport Group site, iZombiesportGroup.com. Bye, internet people.